Pretty much any time I'm shooting photo or video, somebody asks me, what am I shooting with? I also recently got a comment asking me what I use to make my vlog. So today's vlog is called, what's in my camera bag? First, before I talk about what's in my camera bag, I wanna talk about my camera bag itself. I fucking love this bag. I got mine at Chrome Minneapolis. That store doesn't exist anymore, but they have a lot of stores around the country that are super, super cool. You can order yours online, and I'll put a link in the description below. And before I get to what's inside my camera bag, I'm gonna get to what's on top of my camera bag, or rather on the back. This, this is a pretty simple expandable Manfrotto tripod. It's super, super light, but built really, really well. Something that I kind of like about it is the tripod mount itself. It's really small, it just screws onto the bottom of the camera, and it fixes to the tripod really, really effortlessly. I have another tripod that's much larger, much heavier, and can hold more weight, and also sits more stably. It's actually what I'm using to shoot this video with. But it's not nearly as portable, and definitely doesn't suit a daily vlog lifestyle nearly as well as this one. Now we'll get to what's inside the backpack. I love the way the bag opens. It opens right from the top. I keep my camera and usually a lens. Honestly, it's usually attached. It's got a really nice storage space up here with Velcro and a really hardy mesh. I usually put the things that I use most often in here like batteries, memory cards, headphones, and this little guy that I just got. We'll see if I use this a lot or not. Now to the fun stuff. This is my Sony A7R II. It is an incredible camera. It shoots 4K video, 120 frames per second, and it is gorgeous. It's nice and small because it's a mirrorless. A lot of people don't give it the respect it deserves because it's so small, but I'm telling you, it is as good, if not better, than any DSLR on the market. I intend on doing a review of this camera at some point on this vlog. An additional note is that I am absolutely in love with this super cheap purchase. It's paracord camera strap and it costs under $20 and it's easily my favorite strap I've ever had. It just goes around your wrist, tighten it up, and I've never almost dropped it, but this makes sure that if I do drop it, it'll just hang at my wrist. Now we're gonna get to the lenses. This just speaks more to how awesome this bag is. It opens up and you get to see everything you have and you can even access everything through the top. The first, the first lens I'm gonna talk about because it is an absolute workhorse is my Sigma Art Lens 104 to 105. It has a maximum aperture of f4, which isn't the fastest lens, but my God, I use this lens all the time. Expect a review on that particular lens at some point in the future as well. I love it. The next lens that I wanna talk about is my Sigma 18 to 35 APS-C lens. Now it might seem weird to have an APS-C lens with a full frame camera, but I really love this lens for video. I bought it before I had a full frame camera and it's gorgeous and, and such an interesting focal range. It has a maximum aperture of 1.8 which is pretty fast for a zoom lens. And I swear, this is a gorgeous lens. I really love it for performance parts in music videos because the focal range is short enough that it's easy to manage, but also long enough that it does really interesting dynamic shots. I'll probably do a review of this lens at some point as well. My next most commonly used lens is actually a vintage Nikkor lens. It's a 50 millimeter f1.4. It's easily the fastest lens that I have at f1.4. And truly, f1.4 gets a little bit cloudy sometimes, so if I don't want that look, then I have to stop it down a little bit. But it's still a fast lens, and the glass on it is still gorgeous. Right now I use two adapters to make this work with my lens. This is a Canon EOS mount, to Sony NEX adapter. And this is a Nikon F to Sony EOS adapter. I'm pretty sure they make Canon F to Sony NEX, 
But I already had this because I used to own Canon. And all of these Sigma lenses are Canon mount. I will put a link to these converters in the description. And I plan on doing a video about vintage lenses at some point in the future because I think they're a really, really great option for young filmmakers. The next lens is one of my favorite lenses in my whole pack if I want to get a certain kind of shot. Again, it's a vintage Nikkor, 135mm f2.8. It's good all the way to 2.8 and I love what it does to the background of a portrait photo. So far, I don't really use this much in filmmaking. I definitely almost never use it for vlogging, but I do love it as an artistic piece in my kit. I also have to use the same adapter setup as I do with the 50 millimeter. The next lens that I have is definitely a utility type of lens. There's a few good things that it does really well, and it's not that practical for a lot of things. It's a Sigma 12 millimeter to 24. It is insanely wide, especially on a full frame camera. It can be really, really beautiful for landscapes and it makes an outdoor scene look enormous. It's also very useful to capture a very small space and make it look bigger, like for real estate photography. It's not exceptionally fast at f4.5 to f5.6, but it doesn't really need to be. More often than not, you're gonna be using a tripod for this or you're gonna be outside and you don't need a bunch of depth of field. Side note, I really love this bulbous lens element. It has to have this cover on it because the lens sticks out so far. It has this really interesting lens cap situation where it has a cap that goes around the hood and a cap that goes over that cap. I wouldn't really recommend this lens to anybody that's trying to be a filmmaker. It might be useful in vlogging as a sort of selfie lens, but it would just distort my face so much that I don't know if I'd ever want people to see it. The next lens I'm gonna talk about is this vintage Nikkor 28 millimeter. Actually, they call it a 2.8 centimeter because it's really old. It is not particularly fast, f3.5, but for vintage lenses, as far as I know, it's about as wide as they got. I think I read somewhere that because it's a Nikkor H, that means it was made somewhere in the late 50s in Japan, and it is built like a tank. I actually dropped it while I was doing a promo photo shoot for my friend's band, Avocado, and all that happened was this metal ring got dented. I'm pretty sure it's indestructible. The last lens that I keep in this bag is this vintage Nikkor 80 to 200 f1.4. I think this glass element really attracted me to this lens. It is just really nice to look at. It is just really nice to look at and it's a really nice versatile portraiture lens. It's got the old school slide style zoom which is legitimately pretty strange. I don't love it. And if you're trying to hang it upside down, it doesn't just creep, it just falls. So you need some kind of rubber band or something to keep the focal length in place. <clears throat> now that I'm looking at all this stuff, it's almost crazy to believe that it all fits so nicely in this backpack. In addition to my laptop, which fits in a sleeve in the top, back behind everything. If I had to guess, I'd say it weighs 50 pounds. The next thing I'm gonna talk about, and I'm definitely not in love with it. This isn't a raving review of this thing. It's just a shotgun mic that I got from Amazon. I don't remember how much I paid for it, probably like 30 bucks, so maybe I've gotten my money's worth out of it, but I don't love the sound quality. It does come in pretty handy for vlogging though, because this certainly sounds better and picks up way less ambient noise than the microphone that's on the camera, but by no means is this an incredible microphone. I'll probably get myself a Rode microphone someday. This thing is something I just added to my bag. I'm not sure if I'll be using it or not, but... That's kind of cool. It seems like it could be pretty useful for vlogging, especially when it comes to setting up my phone somewhere and using that to shoot myself filming things with my other camera. I actually didn't realize how strong the suction cup was until right now. That's exciting. The final thing, and legitimately something I don't use that often, is my flash and wireless transmitter and receiver. They're not high-end flashes by any means, 
and actually they have a little bit of a hard time mounting to that camera. But they do get the job done after futzing with them a little bit. And they're a fine starting point to learn the general rules of flash photography. I almost forgot this little thing, and I think it's really worth noting. This is a reverse mount for a lens. It lets you take any lens, specifically with a 52 millimeter thread count, thread count, specifically with a 52 millimeter thread, you mount this to the front, and then you mount it backwards onto the camera body itself. And then with one of these adapted vintage lenses, all I gotta do is turn it around, take this adapter, put it on the lens, and then stick this to the camera. And then you can do really, really incredible Then you can get extremely close to something and get some pretty outstanding macro shots. If you're a new photographer looking to do macro photography, I think that's a really cool way to learn. So in addition to some cheap umbrella and softbox lights that I got off Amazon, this setup is pretty much everything that I use when it comes to filmmaking. I think I can safely say that it's everything that I use to vlog with. And every time I go out shooting, I feel perfectly confident that I have what I need to get the shot. So thanks for watching. If you have any specific questions about the Sigma lenses, the vintage lenses, the camera, the bag, tripod, anything, leave me a comment. I'd love to let you know my thoughts. I'm happy to talk shop, give you advice, or if you have any suggestions for me, leave me a comment. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my page, I swear I got a lot of cool shit coming up. But I hope this gives you a good idea of what I'm using to accomplish all the different things that I'm up to. If you haven't yet, check out my Instagram at I am Jesse Lynch, my website jessielynchfilms.com, and there's a playlist on my page to almost all of the video projects I've done in the last nine months. Thank you so much for watching. Love you. Bye.